Hello, in this video lesson I'm going to show you how we can create this great looking multi-layered image. What I've done is taken this picture here of a piece of modern architecture in Cardiff Bay and then I've sandwiched it together with a picture of some tea stained art paper and also another picture of an arrow which is just uh, a painted arrow on the metal hull of a ship. What I'm going to do is create them and merge them and mix them all together to create this cool looking bit of contemporary uh, art. Okay, so let's get started and just close out of our images here and we don't want to save that. Let's collapse our bin so that's not in the way and let's go up to file and down to open and then selecting our source image here texture underscore before and it's a DNG file as you can see. What we're going to do is just um, add, change a few of the parameters here so that our image is nicely prepped for the effects that we're going to overlay on top of it. So I've already worked these out so let's just increase the brightness just a little bit and let's go up to about 61 there. And then we're going to increase the contrast and we're going to crank that all the way up to 81. Now don't worry if the image is starting to look a little odd uh, and not what we'd normally do. It's because we are going to layer the other images on top. We're going to just uh, punch the clarity up to 30. And you can see I can add these uh, numbers numerically using the keypad. You can probably hear the key in the background. And let's really boost the vibrance to 69 and get a nice color in the sky and saturation to 10. And there you can see that our, our image is a little bit more vibrant. We've got that clipping warning on the middle area there just showing that um, our highlights are just clipping off here. But we're not going to... We're not going to worry too much about that for the moment. So let's just click Open Image, and our image should just open in the uh, Photoshop 7, Elements 7 window, and it has, which is great. Okay, now we're going to place our first texture over this image. So let's go up to File and just down to Place. And then we can see we have a browsing window, and we can select our first texture, which you can also find on the companion CD. So let's go highlight texture one and just click place and then you can see we have our arrow now that's actually in the right position so we can simply just go ahead and um, click the green arrow here or just double click here or just hit the enter key so let's just do a quick double click and then you can see that uh, we've committed the layer there obviously we want to start revealing the layer underneath there so we've got our two images our now in one file as separate layers. So what we want to do is mix them together a little bit. And this is where the uh, blending mode, the layer blending modes, come in exceptionally useful. And you can try a, a lot of different blending modes, and they all behave uh, slightly differently the way that uh, the layers are interacting with one another. So let's try, for example, darken here. You can see that's obviously not working. but uh, or soft light as it creates a different effect and different um, blending modes will work with different images so for this layer I'm going to use overlay and then you can see we just got a nice mixture we got some lovely textures coming through in the sky area we got the nice arrow creating a graphic sort of shape in the sky so textures coming through on the sky area there too and that's just what I wanted for this shot so this layer is now set to overlay on the layer blending mode. Let's get this effects window out of the way because we don't really need that. Okay, now let's go up to place again and we're going to grab our next image which is the tea stained art paper and that's called texture underscore two and again you'll find that along with a bunch of other uh, textures that Ali has prepared um, that are also available and they're quite useful. Now this one you can see is orientated slightly differently and these um, lines here act a little bit like the uh, free transform tool and we can simply drag and pull them. In fact, I'm going to pull this right over here because I want these red bits on the right hand side there and then I'm just going to grab this side and just drag it all the way over there. And you can see it's stretched a little bit but I don't really care for this because it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's the textures and the tones and the colors that I'm after um, rather than an, an exact representation of the T. Okay, so let's just click that. And this time I do need to blend the layer with the, one, the ones underneath, but I'm going to choose 
a uh, different layer blending mode and I am going to just go to multiply and there you can see we've got these nice textures coming through. Now it's just a little bit too intense so I'm going to use this opacity slider here and you can see here by just moving the slider I can change the opacity of the layer and I want that to be about sort of 80 let's say about 81 percent there I like that red just coming through there and then some of the the warm tones of the textures there okay so now I am going to create a adjustment layer on top of this this, this is effect, all the layers underneath and this is going to be a photo filter so let's just go layer new adjustment layer and photo filter let's click OK and then you can see we have a photo filter dialog box. Okay, so now I'm going to just choose my filter and for this I'm going to choose deep blue and then you can see that changes there. I'm going to change the density as well to I'm going to tap in about 72% and you can see the effect there. Use this little fellow here, this preview check box and you can just preview the effect. Now that's a little bit too much so I am going to change the um, opacity of this layer because I do want some of that warmth to come through so let's I'm going to crank this all the way down to about 40 and that's just giving me the effect I want so it's just just taking a little bit of that yellow out if you see what I mean so that's if I click on the eye there you can see that okay uh, the next thing I want to do is just create another adjustment layer for the levels and so layer, new adjustment layer and levels. OK. And here's our histogram here. I'm just going to use that just to just to tweak the tones just a little bit. I'm just giving it a little bit more contrast, but just very slightly. And remember it's an adjustment layer, so it's re-editable and you can go back at any stage. And in fact any of these layers you can go back and you can tweak if you you know, want to change the opacity or even experiment, you could, you know, see what happens when you do change the layer blending mode. Um, uh, it's all quite, um, it's all totally editable when you're keeping your image as multiple layers like this. For the final effect, I'm just going to make sure I click back onto my background layer. I'm going to go over to the tools palette here on the left hand side and I'm going to select the burn tool. And I'm going to use this to just darken the edges slightly so that we've got a kind of vignette effect. Now I know we quite often do this using the lens correction filter but when I tried it with the lens correction filter I didn't like the effect we were getting in the top right hand corner here so I've just decided to use the good old burn tool to just darken the corners. I don't really need to darken that corner um, and you can just see it's just got a, getting a good little bit of sort of saturating the blue a little bit there which I kind of liked whoops let's get back just darken the corners a little bit it's kind of subjective this you can do as much or as little as you want probably gone just a little bit over the top there but there you can basically see that we have created this um, good looking multiple uh, layered image it's kind of reflecting the the techniques that traditional film photographers would use when they created multiple exposures shooting one frame on top of the other um, but it's a lot easier in Photoshop it's always a good idea to when you're out and about shooting to think of textures look keep your eyes open for interesting textures and shapes such as the arrow here or the tea stained paper uh, it's good having a little archive of textures that you can always call upon to create images like this